Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. This week I'm going to be working on a watercolor and mixed media abstract and it's going to be a painting that will be a bit sculptural in the sense that I'm going to be using some watercolor ground and other elements to build my texture instead of using salt. Um, so I haven't done this in a while and I really love working with texture in my paintings and so I felt like it was really time for me to, to do that again. It's going to be a bit of an experiment as most of my paintings are because I paint in, in an intuitive way and I try things and sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't and uh, we'll see how this one goes. Thank you for making the time to join me this week and uh, let's get to the video. I've taken some watercolor paper and cut it into a num like three different shapes that I liked that I wanted to work with. My substrate this week is going to be square and I want to, I guess, create something sort of geometric, um, but very textural. So that's why I'm adding the watercolor ground because I'm gonna add a lot of texture on top of these uh, pieces of watercolor paper, and then I'll adhere them to my um, other watercolor paper, <laughs> the, the uh, quote unquote substrate <laughs> for this painting. To stick these elements onto my paper, I'm gonna use some light modeling paste that I'll put on the back of um, the textured elements I've created. And I think the light modeling paste will work better. I, I had used before, I think, some gel medium. And gel medium and watercolors don't really work very well together because when it dries, it is um, sort of like a, a plastic type surface and watercolor of course will not adhere to that so I think using the light modeling paste will work better because that should have some tooth and if there's any um, of the modeling paste that seeps through on the paper I should be able to cover it with the watercolor.
I bought some of these mega art stones last year uh, with the intention of using it mainly for my acrylic abstract work but I thought why not give it a try in the watercolor they have a little bit of a porous texture and I think they would also work with watercolor so I decided I would try to <laughs> add a few of these elements to the painting as well and I think it'll bring a, a, an even more sculptured look to the painting and it's just fun to try something new so why not <laughs> These little art stones are really neat. Um, they come in a number of different sizes and uh, well three different sizes that I know of at least and uh, they're very lightweight so they won't make your artwork heavier which is really also very neat. Um, one thing to keep in mind however is that they are very light and um, <laughs> if you're not careful you can easily push your jar off your <laughs> art table and scatter them all around your studio like I did. So I highly recommend being very careful if you do ever decide to buy these little art stones. Um, they're fun to work with. Well, I'm having fun with them right now and I think they're going to be neat in the painting, but yeah, they can create a little mess that's very hard to clean up if you're not careful. <laughs> I'm really loving the little focal point I've created uh, for my painting and I want to make sure that the edges of the painting are also going to be interesting so I'm going to add some more watercolor ground to the edges of the painting to create some more texture and then once that's done I'll let everything dry and then I'll be ready to start painting. The smallest format of these little art stones is almost like a, a sand-like um, texture <laughs> and uh, I thought it'd be neat to add a little bit of that into the watercolor ground on the sides of the painting. In order to make it stick I'll, I'll use my palette knife to sort of press them into the painting but I am gonna do so I think very carefully because they are sand-like but they're not as hard as sand and so if I press too hard on them, I have a feeling I might crush them. So important to, to be careful when doing this. It's finally time to get painting and I'm feeling super excited to get some paint on this substrate. Um, I had to sort of let the painting sit for a bit because I was working on some other projects and and uh, yeah I'm excited to get this going and uh, oh <laughs> already applying that first layer of paint uh, in, in a wash of blue which is a little bit darker than I normally like to make my washes but I'm feeling a little bit daring this morning <laughs> and so I'm going in with a little bit of a darker wash of color and I love 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 how the texture in the background is really 
showing through once the paint starts to be added on top of it so this is really exciting and I you know painting is fun <laughs> for me it's it's for the most part it's fun there are some moments where I feel a little bit maybe frustrated if, if things may not be going quite as well as I'd like them to but for the most part when I can remember rule number six <laughs> I have fun when I paint and uh, this is no exception. I'm really digging the application of this first layer of paint and I'm feeling excited for what lies ahead. Uh, and that's the fun thing is like every single stroke of paint I put on the paper inspires the next stroke and um, it's exciting to see a painting develop this way. I wasn't really sure I wanted to apply the second color before the first color was dry because I didn't really know if I'd like how they would blend together and then I thought <laughs> the heck with it I want to I want to see what's going to happen because those two colors I think will blend to create something nice and it I think will add something to the painting as well for the colors to blend they won't blend everywhere of course because they're only going to blend where the they they sort of touch together and that can make for an interesting effect as well and uh, especially around the border of that square shape that I've created I think that's going to look really neat so I'm excited to see what's going to happen It's really amazing to me how I barely touched the borders of that square and that paint really spread <laughs> a lot more than I thought it would and I actually really really like it that way so I'm super happy I did it 
And uh, now I'm going to work on intensifying my colors and start to build up um, the intensity of the colors so that I can, can work on uh, developing my focal point in particular. But I want to work on the sides of the painting as well. I don't want to ignore that. I think it's important to consider all aspects of the painting, of course. And uh, yeah, I'm going to deepen my colors. I'm working for the most part mainly with two colors. One is this blue, which of course, knowing me, <laughs> I don't remember the name of this blue. It is called, I think, Cerulean, Cerulean Deep Blue. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Cerulean Deep Blue. Yeah, it's very, very pretty. So I like it. I'm going to work with that. And I'm also working with the other color, uh, which is uh, Quinacridone Rust, another color I really like. And I might add some Nickel Quinacridone Gold. Um, but we'll see. We'll see as they go along. And of course, you know, at some point, <laughs> iridescent paints are going to make it into the painting. Yes, they will. <laughs> oh. I can't help it. I just love them so much. But yeah, I'm really loving these colors. I like how they look together. They're looking a little bit dark right now, but I know I can brighten them up as I go along. Now I know at this point that I definitely want to brighten up the centerpiece of the painting. So I, I'm coming in with uh, some nickel quinacridone gold and um, it looks a little bit dark right now, but as soon as I water it down, it's going to be a lot brighter. And I think that's going to help to make the center stand out more than um, the rest of the square. I don't want everything to be so dark. Contrast is very important, as I've mentioned in the past and uh, I do want to have a good amount of value contrast and you can do that with you know darks and lights but you can also do that by varying your colors and this bright yellow um, it's a it is a bright yellow will help things it, it doesn't look all that bright right now but I, I do see that it's making a difference and I, I'm liking it. And I think I might even add it to the rest of the square because that quinacridone rust is really pretty, but it, it, it is sort of more neutral than I want it to be. So adding some of that yellow is going to warm it up. And I think that's going to help things along. One thing I have found for sure is that working on top of watercolor ground is not exactly like working on top of paper. Watercolor ground is somewhat porous, but it is definitely not as porous as watercolor paper itself. And so the colors don't tend to stay as vibrant on top of watercolor ground as they do on top of the paper itself. If you add more pigment, usually you can get um, a fair amount of color vibrancy on your watercolor paper. I don't find that to be necessarily true with watercolor ground, but I do still really love the effects 
of the textures I can create using the watercolor ground and so it's really neat to play with it in, uh, in this way. I really like how this is looking. I love that the paint has sort of spread, the rust has spread into the blue and every, with the, all of this texture, it almost looks like elements from like a, an old metal painted door or something uh, where there's rust and the paint may be starting to peel off or something. It, it, I, I don't know. To me, it just looks really cool. and. Um, I'm really excited that this is something I can do using watercolors and um, watercolor ground. It's not something I would have ever expected to be able to do in the past and I'm really having so much fun using the watercolor ground this way. I'm, I'm happy I decided to do it. I still enjoy you know working on just flat paper as well but for whatever reason there's something about texture that really gets my senses excited. And I love this. <laughs> It's time for me to add some color to those little stones in the center of my circle and I think the cobalt teal is going to be the perfect color to add on top of them. It needs to be something that stands out a little bit more from the rest of the painting and I think this is the perfect color to do that. Um, right now the color, the little stones or like granules of um, stones on the bottom are still wet and so I think some of that paint is seeping into my brush and it's making the stones look a little darker than I would like them to be but I'll just add some more cobalt teal on top and I think they'll stand out some more and then later I think this will be a really good area also to add some of my iridescent paint because that will make them really pop. At this point, I'm not 100% sure what my next step um, is going to be, except that I really like those little elements of darker color that are popping um, through that sort of blended from the outer parts of the square and the inner parts of the square onto that um, frame. And so I, I'm going to add some blackberry into these lines and what I've done is I've just added a little bit of water inside the lines to darken those areas so that the texture um, and the rest of the color really stands out. not 100% sure that this is really the way to go. Um, there's a lot of dark elements in the painting. Maybe I could have just left it, but I'm trying it. <laughs> and uh, if I'm not 100% convinced it was the right step I'll just do something to change it later on but for now I'm like kind of I'm really <laughs> having fun adding the blackberry to the water that I just put in between the lines and I love how when you just sort of dip your brush in it it's it um, it spreads and uh, makes that area darker I do think that looks pretty, really pretty so yeah I'm sticking with it for now. I think, why not? <laughs> I dropped a little bit more water than I actually intended to drop. 
in these cracks and the dark paint has spread a lot more than I was intending it to so I'm mm, kind of feeling a little <laughs> dubious at that point at this point <laughs> it, but I'm reminding myself that this could that this is <laughs> just a phase the painting is not done until I say it's done um, or until or until I feel like it, I'm ready to call it done and so I'm just going to keep doing it because I'm, I am I decided to and I want to stick to that commitment and I'll have to figure out a way to maybe brighten this up. Um, but it's it's not all lost. I, I do like some of what's going on here. It's a little bit darker than what I was initially intending. So what I'll have to do, I think, or what I want to do is I'll... I'll um, I'll add some more darkness around the frame and I think this will make that centerpiece stand out some more with the darkness um, around it. Um, it'll definitely give it dimension so so we'll see but uh, yeah a lot darker <laughs> than I was actually intending it to be but you know what? That's all a part of experimenting. Sometimes things happen and you're like <laughs> this is how you learn what you would prefer not to do again so I think if I were to uh, paint something like this in the future I would probably opt not to do what I just did <laughs> but then again you never know now having added that last line I'm kind of looking at it and I'm feeling like maybe it's not all that bad so like I said I'm gonna meant I'm gonna add a little bit more darkness around the frame I think making the frame stand out more by creating sort of a bit of a shadow um, and giving it more dimension will help and it'll sort of draw attention away from all the darkness that's in the middle um, and make the square or the the focal point stand out more so that's the hope I'm gonna keep working and uh, not give up because that's the whole thing <laughs> If I were to choose to give up right now, this would definitely never turn into anything I like. So it's better for me to just keep going and to trust in the process and trust in my ability to turn this around. After adding the darkness around the frame, I decided that I was going to add a little bit more quinacridone gold um, to brighten up the center of this focal point. And then I think I'll also add a little bit more blue around the perimeter of the painting just to make things really stand out from each other.
I'm really loving the look of these little stones in the teal and so I've decided to add them not only to the center of the circle but also to the little stones that are around the circle because I think it'll help make that centerpiece um, more eye-catching to have a little bit more color because everything seems very dark right now so that's what I'm working on brightening things up to make my focal point stand out more yes 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 I'm really loving this I think this is definitely uh, <laughs> A far better choice than to just leave those little stones um, untouched. I think I would have probably put something on top of them but this cobalt teal is really helping to um, add some brightness to the painting and that's what it really needed because there was a lot of dark and uh, just needed something to, to catch the eye and to bring some more pop of color into the painting and I'm super happy. I've taken my 24 karat gold out, 24 karat merc gold out, <laughs> um, and I want to add some gold touches in the centerpiece. I'm not 100% sure how to do it just yet for it to work, um, so I'm starting off by adding a little bit of it with my micro mini brush, and then I'm coming over top with a filbert, a uh, damp filbert, and I'm sort of just brushing the gold so that it's uh, a little bit more spread but it it looks good it, and then at the same time it doesn't feel like quite enough so i'm gonna try to apply the paint in a couple of different ways and see if i can't somehow uh, bring this little square frame around my centerpiece a little bit more um, to life because it's it's very dark it's got some really neat elements of a blended color and I do like what I see but it needs a little something something and usually gold is that something something <laughs> especially for me <laughs> I really do love working with iridescent paints um, so I'll start off with this gold and then I'll probably eventually bring in my uh, tropical sunrise magic green and probably also my uh, rutile blue pearl uh, because I think that will also look nice in here so yeah playing with iridescence it's this part of the painting that <laughs> I mean I love the whole process really I do but I do really really love working with the iridescence if you've been watching me for a while you probably have caught on to that Oh man, I, it just really does something for my soul. I love, love, love it. <laughs> Using my micro mini brush sideways and sort of just um, almost like dry brushing the gold on top of the textured elements. Now that is really, really speaking to me, even more so than it was just brushing on the gold and then sort of like trying to spread it. It really it seems to stand out more when I brush it on top of the elements of texture and uh, not only does it shimmer more but it seems to make the textured elements also stand out more so that's for me that's the, definitely the way to go so <laughs> I'm super excited I wanted that I decided to experiment with how I was going to apply this gold and uh, now I'm just going to sort of stick to adding it this way because, man, it really looks so neat. And I am loving it. Now I'm going to work on uh, the little granules of like sand light stones <laughs> in between the, the bigger stones with some 
uh, here it's interference green and at some point I'll probably switch to my tropical sun sunrise magic green but I want to add a little touch of glimmer on top of these little stones so that they stand out more because right now you hardly can notice them in the background and I want them to also uh, be a little bit eye-catching. I don't want them to catch more attention than the little blue stones but I do think it, it will be nice to add something to make them stand out a little bit more.
just a little bit more of this 24 karat Merc Gold as a final touch and then I'll be ready to take the tape off and move in for a closer look. Removing the tape border is always so satisfying for me. It takes away these, um, what I consider not so pretty <laughs> um, edges, and it leaves a nice crisp white line, which I really like, and it sort of just frames the painting uh, without actually having added a frame just yet. So it gives me a first glimpse of how the, how nice the painting could look if it was framed. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy with how this turned out. <laughs> it looks even better than I thought it would. So, yay! <laughs> the textures in this painting are really so neat and all the elements really stand out more because of it, I think. Um, so I'm super happy I decided to work with more watercolor ground and these collage elements. I think it was super fun. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see that the paper is not really all that much <laughs> more buckled than any of my other paintings in the past. So yay for that. <laughs> I really love texture. And for me, it really takes my watercolors to a whole new level when I can work with watercolor ground to create something like this. What exciting ways do you like to work with your watercolors? Let me know in the comments. I'd really love to hear from you. Another week, another painting. And once again, I want to thank you for joining me on my creative journey. It's been so much fun and I hope you have a wonderful week. Oh, and Happy creating!